Hey friends, Sun Warper here, and today we're going to go over one of my favorite ways to make a percussive pluck synth in the style of Dead Mouse and Progressive House. If you're familiar with his work, you probably already know the synth I'm talking about. It's a very percussive and evolving synth that's all over his work in arpeggios and chords. I'm going to be making this synth in Logic, but I'll be using the Reason Rack and the stock Reason Synth Europa. If you're not using those DAWs or those synths, that's okay. Any synth with multiple oscillators and a filter mod will work. And if you like these kind of videos, consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribe. It helps a ton. So yeah, let's get into it. So this is the patch that I made for my cover of the Dead Mouse song Oral Synapse. This is the pluck synth right here. And I'm going to play it solo first so you can hear it by itself. And then I'll put it in the context of the track. And this is in the context of the song. And one of the most important things about this is we're going to be putting a filter mod with this envelope on the filter frequency cutoff. And this is what causes all the change and evolution and this right here is what gives it that very percussive sound. So let's remake this patch in an empty project file. Okay, so we've got a brand new project file open on Logic. So I'm going to just start with software instrument Reason Rack plugin. And we'll open this. And then we're going to choose Europa Shape Shifting Synthesizer. And we're going to reset it to patch default. And there's just one sine wave oscillator. That's it. They call it engine in this synth. So the first part of making this pluck synth is sawtooth waves. So we're just going to put that to a sawtooth. I'm going to do three. You can do two. You could probably even do one, but I like having three and I'll show you why in a second. So all of them are going to be this basic analog sawtooth. And for the first and second ones, we're going to just detune them opposite of each other just slightly. And you don't have to do the unison part, but I just want to get a little bit of a almost analog sense of detune. So the unison helps with that that's also what this tune does you can also do it in the uh, mod section over here by doing like lfo1 and setting it to engine one pitch and just do it slightly set a very slight lfo on it sync it maybe put it to 4-4 so it's just very slowly changing the pitch ever so slightly we're not going to do that for this so i'm going to shut it back off now the reason I did three engines or oscillators is because I want this synth to be pretty wide in the stereo spectrum. So what I'm going to do is first and second, I'm going to just put to the left and to the right. And you want to try to get these pretty even, or at least do it at first. And then we're going to put all three synths through the filter. Put a little drive, a little bit of resonance. This doesn't really matter where it's going to go. So the second step of making the synth is this filter mod and so i'm going to set it to envelope one and we're going to make a sawtooth wave on the envelope a lot of sawtooths in this and we're going to do it at one eighth and we're not going to loop this mod so now that we've got the filter mod on you can hear the change it's going to make and you can even see it on the envelope over here this is without it so it's much more of a longer sustained sound and if we crank this mod you can hear it's already cutting it so what it's doing is it's playing the filter very high at the start and then quickly within an eighth note it shuts it down so that's why as you increase it, it starts opening up more and more so let's just adjust this ADSR really fast we don't want a lot of that of that and just a pinch of attack because it is very percussive so this is it without the mod now And this is it with the mod. <laughs> and we'll lower the filter. Okay, so now that we have the filter mod on, the next step is adding effects. And so I'm gonna add some distortion, which you can see here, it's just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add delay and reverb. Now I also recorded in the part for the song, just a quick version of it, which you can hear here. 
and I'm just going to add the effects now. So the first one we're going to do is Echo Boy from Sound Toys, and we're going to do a ping pong delay. We're going to set it to dotted eighth notes, a little bit of that, some feedback, up the saturation. Okay, and then we're going to add some reverb. And for that, we'll just do a stock. Let's do chroma verb. And we'll do bloomy. Let's sync that and do it every... What we're gonna do is automate these effects so that they come up and down in the song. So for Logic, you just go to Automate and we're gonna go to Echo Boy. And the first one we're gonna automate is the feedback. So if you had multiple bars of this, like in the original song, you could automate from zero, bring it up to somewhere pretty high, and then in the next part, bring it down a little bit and do it all over again. But since this is just one bar, I'm just gonna raise it. We're also going to automate the mix of it. This is another part. You want it to come up and down in the mix so that at some parts it's just playing by itself without it, no delay, and then slowly it's ramping up. And we're gonna do the same thing with the reverb by going to the wet and we're gonna just start it at zero and bring it up. And then the big thing I find with Dead Mouse synths, especially with his arpeggios, but with these chords too, he's doing it, is if you go to the actual filter and the cutoff of the filter and automate that. So we've got the filter, we're gonna set it and bring it up. So now we've got automation on the filter cutoff, the feedback and mix of the delay and the mix on the reverb. So let's hear what that all sounds like together. So that automation trick is what I consider the secret weapon in Dead Mouse's arsenal. It's what really adds that emotional weight to parts. Because you can control the way the sound is hitting and the amount of echo, reverb, and things like that to really give it its own place in the mix and it's always changing so it stays more interesting even if you're doing simplistic parts or not adding much to a song. You can add a lot just by adding automation and by creating these peaks and valleys and sounds like you can mess with the delay so that they're more in some parts and less in others. Doing a lot of automation like that can add a ton of different complexity within the song with what could be very simple parts. I mean that's just a couple of chords but you're adding all these different effects and it layers on top of each other and then within the mix it's creating this huge emotional journey within the song. So now that you've got an interesting main synth part you're gonna need some background soundscapes. And one of my favorite ways to do that is in this video here. And with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.